Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. To improve the Air Force's tactical capabilities, there has been constant investment in research and development to create aircraft capable of being more effective in their role. For example, during the 1970s, the Air Force commissioned Fairchild Republic to build an aircraft capable of performing close air support missions. This resulted in the A-10 Thunderbolt II, built with a cantilever monoplane wing for stability at low speeds, and a GAU-8 Avenger cannon being effective against light maritime attack aircraft and all ground targets. This company, originally known as Republic Aviation, has been responsible for constructing some historic aircraft, such as the P-47 Thunderbolt, which served an important role as a fighter bomber during World War II. The company also built the F-105 Thunder Chief, the primary combat aircraft used in the Vietnam War. Thanks to this experience in aircraft manufacturing, together with Northrop, paving the way for the production of the A-10 Thunderbolt. This superiority has continued to this day, even though plans for its decommissioning have been postponed several times due to the aircraft's reputation and near unmatched capabilities. This is why nearly 300 A-10s are still in operation today, distributed across various military bases. They remember seeing the airplanes out on the flight line. Uh, it's been pretty impressive how many folks have stories to share seeing our A-10s back at Republic Airfield. The A-10's notoriety has been achieved thanks to the aircraft's array of features including travel pods that are built under the aircraft to carry various types of cargo, including tools, equipment, or the pilot's items. Constructed from the same materials as the aircraft's armor, the item inside these pods are protected against potential attacks or other eventualities. These elements improve the quality of operations and pilots, which is why the aircraft features other aids, such as a retractable boarding ladder located near the cockpit that can be deployed by the pilot for easy access to the plane. These types of tools speed up pre-flight processes, including weapons preparation, boarding, and starting the engines located above the fuselage to protect them from ground attacks and reduce the infrared signal produced by temperature. Once prepared, the aircraft is positioned on the runway for takeoff, where the pilot can take advantage of the A-10's large wing, aileron, and decelerator surfaces to perform the precise maneuvers that have made the aircraft famous. In addition to its great maneuverability, the A-10's fame is due to the effective use of its armament, which is specifically designed to support friendly ground forces during various operations. While the GAU-8 Avenger is clearly its primary weapon, the A-10's design allows it to mount other types of weapons and tactical aids, such as air-to-surface missiles, like the AGM-65 Maverick, which must also be integrated with targeting systems such as infrared or electro-optical sensors. However, even with the ability to carry different armament options, the main cannon remains the aircraft's most used tool. Due to its importance, Many tactics and strategies built for the aircraft are centered around this cannon, as is the case with strafing.
This tactic takes advantage of the aircraft's low-speed capabilities to fly low and deliver precise shots at targets during strafing runs. This is due to the 30mm caliber ammunition used by the cannon, which is fired continuously at over 3,300 feet per second. When fired, it is standard to use a combination of two types of 30mm rounds. Firstly, an armor-piercing incendiary known as PGU-14B, which uses an aluminum body and depleted uranium core to penetrate any armor. And secondly, a high-explosive incendiary round, known as PGU-13B, which, as its name implies, damages its targets through its explosive or incendiary effects. The Avenger's usual firing follows a sequence of five armor-piercing rounds to one high-explosive round, allowing for greater effectiveness. <laughs> to fire this large number of projectiles, the ammunition is organized inside an ammunition drum that has a maximum capacity of 1,350 rounds. But, in order to balance the weight of the aircraft, a maximum of 1,170 is used. The process of loading this enormous drum is carried out in the hangar, where the ground crews use a Thintex ammunition loading assembly cart that transfers the ammunition inside the aircraft using link tube carriers, similar to a plastic case for each individual bullet. Everybody needs to be communicating, needs to be talking to each other because it is a machine with a belt that continuously goes through. You know, things can get caught in the belt and we all need to be pretty much eyes on the round so that we know if there's a bad round, it doesn't make its way back into the A-10. Okay. Let's go the other side. As previously mentioned, the A-10 has the capability to include other types of armament to enhance its offensive and tactical capabilities during operations. This is thanks to its design, which features 11 hardpoints under the wings and fuselage. Therefore, in addition to missiles, ground crew can mount Hydra 70 rocket pods, join direct attack munitions, or cluster bombs such as the CBU-87 and CBU-103. The latter releases multiple sub-munitions over a target area, engaging multiple targets. During the testing involving this munition, the pilots learn about the features of the explosives, like their fuses that determine the timing and pattern of submunition release. This training also familiarizes pilots with other installed weapons. This includes using tools such as an otter cam located under the fuselage, which records these tests and provides greater insight into the capabilities of these weapons. During A-10 operations, both in testing and real-life operations, its structure, while renowned for its extreme durability, can still be vulnerable to incidents requiring scheduled maintenance. These incidents are not necessarily military-related, but can be eventualities, such as a bird strike. <laughs> An event like this caused damage to an A-10's horizontal stabilizer in 2023. Rather than decommissioning the aircraft, the 23rd Maintenance Squadron collaborated with engineers from Hill Air Force Base to do a complete tail swap.
This operation has been part of extensive maintenance and replacement programs that ensure the A-10's longevity. One of those includes scheduled wing maintenance, replacing them with new ones with better wire harness designs. These A-10 repair and parts replacement processes are carried out in specialized hangars, which provide a controlled environment while the technicians and engineers perform their operations. Furthermore, this location houses most of the tools that allow them to repair, remove, or install the aircraft's various parts. The variety of these components means that these technicians must have a high level of mechanical and electronic knowledge to handle them. Since, during these processes, they handle not only parts, such as wings or fuselage parts, but also more delicate components, such as the HUD. Installing this fundamental part, which provides the pilot with all essential information about the aircraft and weapons, involves detailed steps, such as positioning the projection unit, securing it to the cradle assembly, and carefully connecting the electrical connectors. Assembling the various components of an aircraft after repair or replacement involves a prior step in which each part is functionally tested to determine that it will not have any issues once the aircraft is assembled. This is the most critical for components such as the main cannon that are placed in a testing facility. Here, the gun is installed in a test rig with multiple sensors so the engineers can evaluate its mechanical and operational performance, including its firing rate, accuracy, and recoil management. Once the cannon is guaranteed to be fully operational and free of future issues, technicians begin mounting the 620-pound weapon on the aircraft. During this process, the nose panels and part of the underbelly are removed to allow the Avenger to be loaded using a weapons loader like the BL-23. This tool gives hangar crews greater control over positioning it at the nine o'clock position, aligning it with the aircraft's center line. The technicians finally proceeded with the connection of the hydraulic system and the assembly of the drum where the ammunition was stored. Like other components, engines are tested after maintenance, usually within locations known as hush houses, soundproof spaces where engine performance can be evaluated without any inconvenience. So why we test the engines in the hush house is due to the noise pollution that it can create. We have sound suppression material all in the walls and it maintains a quiet environment. And we have more capability to inspect the engine while it's running. And we have a lot of gauges to monitor the engine. After decades of service and countless flight hours, the fact that so much effort is devoted to the A-10's maintenance and repair processes only demonstrates its great importance to the Air Force. While aviation development has led to the creation of incredible aircraft in recent years, the A-10's utility and performance for ground support missions remain unsurpassed. We'll just have to wait and see if the day will come when this beast of the air finds a replacement worthy of its renown.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.